Alessandro Barbosa, you've been playing the division, so have I. We have put in a ridiculous amount of hours so far into Ubisoft's latest game. How many hours are you on right now at the time that we are recording this review? Um, I think I'm closing in on around 30, 38 to 40, around about there. Um, so yeah, a lot of time spent in the division at the moment. I oh think my. you've got around 30 as well, hey? I am close to 30. I mean, I've just dinged level 25 in the game, so I'm pretty much, I'm scraping that ceiling right there of 30 hours into the division. Yeah, I've uh, I've hit uh, level 30, obviously. I've dabbled in a bit of the end game, and I think I've got a, a pretty decent grapple on, on what Ubisoft tried to do with this launch and kind of what they're trying to set up for for the next year because this is a game they they want to keep going for you know the foreseeable future with post-launch content and stuff like that so yeah it's uh it's a great game don't you think absolutely it's years in the making it's gone through numerous phases numerous d delays but it's finally here and i wasn't expecting this i mean when, when you get when you look at it, it looks like just your regular cover based shooter but it's not it's so much more than that from what i've played and seen so far yeah, I mean, I think in a lot of ways Ubisoft uh, changed what the division was over over the course of, you know, it's been like three, just over three years since they actually revealed it. And I think it's gone through a really, really iterative process. And we've arrived at this game, which feels really great to play alone. It feels even better to play with friends. But like you said, it is a third person, you know, cover shooter with so many more elements thrown in at it it's got you know your rpg elements your massive multiplayer online elements and um the closest comparison i mean everyone wants to say it's diablo with guns it's the same kind of comparison they used uh with borderlands with destiny stuff like that but it kind of is that it's it's loot driven it's uh rpg focused even though the rpg elements are really light but at its core it is a cover-based third person shooter and it's really good at doing you know shooting yeah, you say RPG elements are light, but to me it's like front and center right there. There are so, so many numbers, skills, perks, all of that. It's so much of it. It, it just took me by surprise. It's definitely a numbers driven game. This isn't, I mean, I think that to me is the most jarring aspect of the division because it's set in a realistic, you know, near future setting even you you're playing as humans you're not killing aliens like you are in destiny you're not on a fancy world like pandora like in borderlands you're in new york you're in manhattan and i think it's a bit jarring at first to realize that you know a single gunshot to the head doesn't really kill enemies uh because it is an rpg when you shoot people numbers are going to be flying off uh when you equip new weapons you're going to see your dps counter rise and rise um the same way that gear affects your dps it affects your health it affects stuff like skill power so it's a really really numbers numbers driven game and that's kind of what keeps you going forward you know that feeling of um, happiness when you pick up a new piece of gear and the little arrows next to it all shoot up in green meaning you know when you equip it you're going to be really you know more powerful than you were before and um, that's essentially what keeps games like this moving forward it's that that pursuit of new loot that pursuit of better loot and it's done really well in the division it's not overdone you're not picking up pieces of you know you're not picking up like three guns off every enemy you peg but it's a really steady flow of uh, a loot that you can use or break down for crafting or sell. Uh, it's a really satisfying gameplay loop in the end. Speaking of moving forward, I mean, this has been divisive between you and me. I love the cover system that they actually use in this game. You you aren't too sold on it. I mean, I, I think it's technically brilliant that if you keep moving forward, you pick up these advantages and how cover is treated in the division. Yeah, listen, cover covers a really important aspect of the game because it's so numbers driven and because you take damage really easily, um, you're going to be sticking to cover, you know, 99% of the time. So, I mean, you you really like it. You like the way it kind of flows together when you're moving forward. And in that case, it does. Um, the way you're able to, to shift cover by just holding down the button, very, you know, splinter cell-esque like, um, it works well. And it works well when you're driving forward. The problem that I have with the cover system is that it's sometimes erratic in the way that it you know interprets what you're trying to do so a lot of the time i was trying to stick to one side of cover and ended up sticking like 
90 degrees to the other side of it, you know, right in the line of enemy's fire. Or sometimes I'd want to detach from cover, cover really quickly and it would be like rather sticky and, you know, really opposing to me trying to get away from it. And, um, you know, other times it would just pop me out of cover and, I, and because there's no like crouch in the division, you're standing up directly and people are just taking shots at your head. So to me, it, it comes off as like an Assassin's Creed parkour system. It's there, it's so fundamental to the game, but it gets your your inputs and your actions wrong a lot of the time which is a really really it's a horrible thing to have but like you said when you're moving forward and when you're switching up cover in between firefights it moves fluidly and um i like the little you know the the, the little bits where you can you can quickly duck around a, a corner of cover if you see like an approaching enemy coming towards you or um you know just popping in and out of cover to shoot is really good i just wish that it was a little more responsive you know most of the time Fair enough. Uh, one thing that surprised me was how tactical the whole system actually is. I mean, at one point I was struggling in this one stage and I thought to myself, hang on, I'm going to double back, I'm going to get the higher ground. Just tactical ideas like that, just the basic rules of war, the rules of engagement, you know, just going all Sun Tzu there. It's really effective in the way that this yeah. game is set up. Yeah, it's super, super well done. I think... Uh at the end of the day, the level design is really, really good. Um, especially when you, you put a microscope under the story missions. Uh, the way they mix verticality and, you know, tight close quarters uh, corridors and more open expansive courtyards, it's it's really, really good. And it, like you said, it keeps you on your toes because you're constantly having to think about where enemies are going to come from, which directions they're going to attack you from. And because the AI is so relentless, they really are keen on flanking you. They're really keen on getting up in your face you constantly have to be moving around and thinking about where you're going to move while taking as little damage as possible, especially if you're playing alone and you know you don't have a buddy there to kind of revive you when you make really stupid mistakes. So I like that aspect a lot. I think it's it's bolstered by the RPG elements of it, um, you know, considering you have all these skills to equip from these three different trees, uh, your, your um, medic, security and tech. And, you know, being able to change those up on the fly and change them to suit your needs for a certain situation is also really cool because you don't have to lock down your role from, you know, level zero. I can be a medic at level 30. I can be a tech specialist at level 30. I can be DPS at 30. It all depends on what gear I equip, what skills I equip, and uh, your role can change at, you know, the flick of a button almost, which is really cool. I really, really like that aspect of it. Also really surprising, and I never thought I'd say this about a Ubisoft game set in the modern day, is how they approach firearms, how they approach guns. Because like in the past with games like Splinter Cell or Ghost Recon, guns have felt like, I felt like I was using BB guns, like airsoft guns, but like they've learned from Destiny, you can say, to just make the actual gunplay so viscerally satisfying. Yeah, the gunplay is really, really good. I've, I've also seen... A lot of people kind of divided over this, but I, I, seem, to th I seem to agree with you. I, I really like the gunplay. I feel it's punchy. I feel that the, the sound my weapon makes uh, often represents how much power I'm putting behind it. Um, and I just, I love the, the customization system. I think they took a page out of, I think it was Ghost Recon had a fairly deep weapon customization system as well. And they've kind of integrated that into the division so you can you know, you can customize your, your muzzle, your magazine, your grips, your scope, your everything. And all of those, again, then just feed into the RPG system of rarity and, you know, stats building and stuff. And I got lost a lot in just in modding my guns and crafting new mods and stuff like that. So I really like the weapons. I like the different combinations you can, you know, you can have with them, like an assault rifle and a sniper or a really powerful pistol and your your um, deployable shield. There's there's a lot of variety and it, it keeps you changing up your loadout, which is really nice because it's really easy for these types of games to nestle you into one gun combination and drive you, you know, 10, 15 levels forward using the same weapon. Uh, Destiny constantly gets you, uh, not Destiny, sorry, the Division constantly gets you, uh, shape, you know, changing things up along the way. Uh, also speak of customization, your character himself. I really like what the division has done with just, you know, giving your own character a unique look that isn't actually tied to your main gear. Yeah, I think this is something that needs to be put in a lot more RPGs because there's nothing worse than getting a piece of gear that, you know, bolsters your stats so much, but it looks horrendous. I like the fact that the division separates the two so I can have my agent looking fly or hipster or, you know, like uh, Steve Buscemi. 
I was about to say full <laughs> full bushimi. I've gone full <laughs> bushimi. <laughs> you can go full bushimi. You can go anything, and uh, you know, not affect the stats of your character, which is really nice. Because you know, people like to express themselves, especially when you hop into somewhere like the dark zone, and everyone, you know, you, you're running into other players. You kind of want to stand out and kind of want to give your agent uh, an identity of sorts. So I really like there's there's a lot of um, you know pieces of clothing that you can buy and find around the world, and a lot of it's very different and very cool, and you know, kind of stands out against the the depressing and sometimes uh, drab backgrounds that you find yourself in. But uh, yeah, I really like that part. Okay, we've name dropped Destiny quite a few times. Uh, there's mm. there's the um, natural comparisons here, but um, you know, besides them being shooters with RPG systems and many other elements at play, there's one thing that these two games do share, and that's, well, a rubbish storyline. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, Destiny's storyline came under heavy criticism when it came out and I don't think the division should be exempt from the same criticism um it's not that there isn't a story so the story is like it's there but because the division's trying to keep the game going you know for for a good few months even years forward there's no way that the story can kind of round itself out in one game so what it ends up being is just like these story missions which kind of expand on this this law of this virus, um, kind of you know killing humankind slowly, and uh, the pursuit of finding a vaccine and a cure for it. But it never really goes anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere, and it's not really thoughtfully delivered. Uh, you have to read a lot. You have to really, uh, you know, try your best to to get from the law what it's trying to give out. Um, and you know, having an agent that doesn't speak, doesn't really have an identity, kind of makes it just as bland. So. Unfortunately, not a great story, but then again, when last did Ubisoft really deliver a great story, you have to ask yourself. Ooh, burn! <laughs> <laughs> that being it's true. It's true. Th that being said, though, I think when you do side missions the whole time, your, your handlers on those side missions are just so quirky and hilarious. Yeah, I think what's gone into building the world around the division is a lot more engaging than than the story itself so like you said the the handlers that you get for the side missions are really quirky because they all have their different personalities i think i ran into one that was like an ex-mafia boss and there was one guy who was a complete germaphobe then there was one guy who was like all into philosophy and stuff like that it's it was really cool and they kept you know the side missions do repeat themselves and they they kind of get a bit boring after a while but having these handlers um come in and check things up a bit is really really cool and um i mean that just kind of ties into all these small details that ubisoft has littered around the division i think you know it's really really real and it feels real and it feels like if that really happened today that's kind of what you would find around the city uh, and the same goes for just you know wandering into open buildings these derelict office buildings that you know used to be teeming with life and now they're just completely desolate and dead so you know in terms of that the division really nails it and exploring manhattan is really really fun it's just it's a shame that the actual narrative they're trying to tell doesn't kind of match those highs yeah the manhattan self itself it I mean, the Manhattan map itself is so impressive. I mean, what I'm most impressed by so far is the realistic trash bags that are just littering blocks and just how the whole mm. city's gone to hell. And it's populated just enough by people that want to either kill you or people that are very jumpy at seeing a heavily armed agent come their way. But such a great map to explore. Yeah, and a, and a lot of stuff to do within it as well. It's not just It's not just wandering around and kind of, you know, piecing together how this thing happened. There's... There's so much stuff to find while you're wandering around, aside from just, um, you know, intel and, you know, classic collectible fares. There's loads of weapons lying around. A lot of the time, early on in my in my uh, playthrough, I found some of the best weapons and the best gear just by, you know, coming upon chests and um, weapon crates around the city. So there's a lot to do. And um, even though the city itself is dead and a lot of the time you're, you're sprinting through streets that have complete, like, no life in them, they they fit into the story and the setting the division is trying to sell so it never feels you know horrible it's, it's a beautiful game i'm i'm genuinely impressed by the the level of visuals on such a massive scale in new york itself mm, yeah it's a it's a great looking game it it's not exactly up there to what ubisoft first showed in 2013 but by now that's not surprising it's not exclusive to ubisoft it's like everyone is doing that now for e3 so but regardless of that i think the division um looks really good i think it looks it's it's one of the best looking games on this gen currently which is a marvel considering how massive its city is and how 
um, open it is. I mean, there, there's, there isn't a time where the game loads. There isn't a single loading screen, which is phenomenal. And to have that amount of detail and that amount of, you know, visual fidelity with that, uh, it just makes the experience, you know, much, much better. Okay, so, so we've been talking mainly about the single player, which your friends can join you for, but we've left out something else. We've saved the best for last, depending on how you feel about it. We're talking, of course, about the Dark Zones, this PvP area where it's you versus the, the toughest goons in the division, and also maybe your best friend who's going to stab you in the back for some of that loot that you're carrying. So, Alessandro, the, the Dark Zone. Is it a win? Is it a hit? Is it a miss? What do you think? It's it's an experiment. It's interesting because uh, I, I really enjoyed the Dark Zone when I played it in the beta and I kind of understand why now. Uh, when we played it back in beta, it was in really small spurts and the balance in the Dark Zone was kind of geared towards um, people surviving in small groups. Sometimes you could survive alone, sometimes you know just two people. Um, that's changed drastically in in the final game so the dark zone is kind of an area where you can wander in there at low levels and you can kind of get some you know some loot from the dark zone at low levels but it's very much the meat of what ubisoft is expecting to be your end game instead of grinding through story levels which you can do with daily daily missions uh the dark zone is like a dynamic little portion of uh, manhattan that you know has your pvp it has really really um highly leveled ai characters and uh, elites that you can go and farm for loot and then it presents this unpredictability of you know like you said being shot in the back by your friend or or losing your loot to an ai mob and it be becoming public to everyone else playing on that server so it's a really interesting experiment in terms of um online player morality you know do people want to screw their friends over? Do people want to screw strangers over? Do they want to work, uh, you know, in tandem with complete strangers and, you know, kind of extract your loot out of the dark zone together? Um, and the reason it doesn't really work now is because of the kind of balance in this. So there's a real imbalance towards um, going rogue, which means turning on other, um, other online players. Um, when you do that, a counter like kind of pops up in your head and you've got a bounty on you and the entire server is made aware of your presence and kind of, you know, hunts you. If you make it to the end of that counter, uh, you're rewarded with a lot of XP, a lot of docks and XP, a lot of currency that you can use to buy loot. Uh, and then no one wants, you know, the, the, the bounty is over. The problem is that if you die, you lose a lot of XP because you were marked as rogue and, you know, players kind of got you uh, before you could get away from them. And the imbalance lies in there that the reward for going rogue never ever negates the risk. So right now a lot of people are cooperating a lot in the dark zone, which is the complete opposite of what anyone expected it to be. I think everyone who heard this idea of the dark zone kind of thought it's just going to be a breeding ground for grievers and young kids. But it's kind of the opposite. Everyone's just playing together and helping out each other. And that sounds really great, except that it takes a lot of the tension out of the dark zone. So you no longer fear getting a bullet in the back because you know the person wouldn't risk that and lose their own loot. So Ubisoft, are, they're playing with that balance and they've already said that they want the Dark Zone to be a huge component of the game. But right now, it's it just lacks the kind of bite that makes the entire idea of the Dark Zone so compelling. Um, that and it's completely impossible playing alone. So if you're, I mean, the, the entirety of, of the Division outside of the dark zone is completely fine playing alone once you're in the dark zone even two people sometimes isn't enough to cut it i know jeff and i we played for about an hour just trying to kill two groups of enemies um and we were you know we were over leveled for that area so it's really a you know a ground for four players to go in there and grind their loot and kind of you know get their loot ready for the raids coming in april but it's not as compelling and not as uh, rewarding as the rest of the game so the end game kind of feels imbalanced because of it and it also has a habit of just dropping enemies on top of you just instantly because i mean i was hunting about three purple elites and then as i was hunting them all of a sudden there were six yellow elites behind me up yeah. and that just drove me nuts yeah the respawn rates the uh, the drop rates as well um the amount of uh, phoenix credits which is your end game currency that you get from them it's all something that ubisoft really needs to tweak because the dark zone itself needs to be the the kind of gambling addiction that you come back to um, that you log into every day just so you can do your quick farming run and try and see what you get from it if people aren't compelled to do that and there's no reason for them to do that then it, it loses it and then you know as soon as there isn't a compelling end game 
the division will lose players. So I really hope that they get the balance right. I think they will because they realize how important it is. And, um, you know, until then, that's all there really is to do once you hit the level cap in the division until raids and future content comes out, uh, which which start coming out next month. So the end games, it, it, it's a bit thin. It, it really is a bit thin. But there's enough there, I think, to get people through until, you know, the proper four man raids in April. Right. So that's the division. That's it reviewed. So any final thoughts that you want to just end this, this topic off with? Um, I enjoyed the division far more than I thought I would, put it that way. I, I was never a huge fan of Destiny. Um, I bought it, I played it, and I never really got into it as much as you did, for instance. Um, the division is very different to me. The division is a game that I right now want to log on and, you know, continue my daily quests with. It is a game that I can see myself playing for the foreseeable future, and I actually look forward to a lot of the post content that's coming. But it is, you know, saying that it isn't without its faults it has some glaring issues with it um and some of them can be fixed and some of them aren't so easy to fix i just hope that ubisoft really takes care of the division going forward and um kind of listens to the community feedback because i really think if they do which they are currently doing uh, it could be a really great game until we get enough subscribers on this channel my dog won't be allowed to have a supper Look at that face. Come on, subscribe to the channel. She's waiting for her dindins.